Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer with PrevMed, Heart Attack and Stroke Prevention, Disability Prevention, uh, Longevity. <clears throat> Dr. Uh, th today's is on Dr. Uh, Bruce Ames. I've talked for uh, several times and I've mentioned several scientists in the anti-aging area. Uh, Walter Longo at UC Davis, David Sinclair at Harvard and uh, University of South Wales. Um, near Barzillai at uh, Einstein in New York. Well, I've left out one of the big ones, uh, Dr. Bruce Ames at UC Davis. Dr. Ames <coughs> is um, credited with being the father of the mitochondrial a uh, theory of aging. As you know, the other three um, uh, scientists that I looked at, that I've mentioned, are all focusing around either the mitochondria or glucose metabolism, all associated with cell respiration. Dr. Uh, uh, Ames now has a, another theory that he's very interested in. It's not, uh, it's not in replacement of the mitochondrial theory, but it's a, a different aspect. He calls it the... Uh, triage theory. Now the triage theory means this. It's, it comes from uh, uh, the battle lines, uh, military history. When uh, w the wounded were brought in from battle, they had to set up a priority system or a triage system. The people that needed uh, health care, surgery, the worst were, were triaged into the OR, the, the operating room. To get treatment. Those that didn't need it so much were triaged over to the side to wait because they could wait. Um, he's applying this, this uh, prioritization or, or what he calls the triage theory to micronutrients and uh, minerals and vitamins, micronutrients. Especially one, basically his point is that there are ones that we have a chronic uh, moderate deficiency in. When we have that chronic moderate deficiency, these micronutrients are used for the life-threatening issues and not used for other issues. The other issues uh, cost us longevity and long-term health by creating chronic disease. So, for example, <clears throat> he's uh, talking about vitamin K and he said the clotting proteins get it first. Only after the clotting proteins get vitamin K do the other proteins get it. Um, proteins that prevent calcification of arteries, that prevent cancer, that prevent bone fractures. Uh, in other words, things that happen as you get older with chronic diseases, calcification of arteries, heart attack and stroke, uh, cancer. You know, again, heart attack and stroke are number one and number three causes of death. Cancer is number two. Uh, and bone fractures, again, all which go along with, with aging. <clears throat> so, again, according to <coughs> Dr. Uh, Ames, the, uh, these chronic micronutrient deficiencies are leading to uh, us getting chronic diseases and uh, inability to live to a healthy 100-year-old. Now, where does Dr. Ames fit in the world of, the world of science? He, he's not a lightweight. He's got over 550 publications. Again, he's at UC Berkeley. He's one of the top referenced or cited uh, scientists in the world. Um, when scientists write uh, research papers, they cite papers that uh, preceded them in terms of uh, findings in that specific area. So if you're one of the top uh, cited ref scientists in the world, then a lot of people have stood on your shoulders to uh, make the next steps in terms of science. He's been on the NCI Board of Directors. That's the National Cancer Institute uh, Board of Directors. Uh, anybody that's been at that level, I think, deserves some respect and deserves to be heard. Uh, he's been on the National Cancer Advisory Board. He's received multiple awards like the Linus Pauling Award, <clears throat> the Society of Microbiology Lifetime Achievement Award, the Japan Award. It goes on and on and on. 
Now, what does he think about uh, the importance of the <clears throat> of the triage theory? He's quoted as saying the triage theory is the most important thing he's ever done. And this is coming from the guy, again, who uh, many would credit with coming up with the mitochondrial theory of aging. So, what's he done recently? Um, again, we mentioned, uh, I think we mentioned vitamin K. So, if not, let's just go through that real quick. Um, Dr. Pauling got deeper into discussions around vitamin K recently. He discovered that there are multiple proteins involved with uh, uh, anticoagulation that use vitamin K, but then there are multiple proteins outside of that clotting factor. Uh, these proteins, as we mentioned a few minutes ago, prevent uh, calcification of arteries. They prevent cancer. They prevent... Uh, they're used in bone uh, strength and development, so they prevent uh, broken bones. <clears throat> so guess what? Those of you who've heard of vitamin K2, again, Dr. Um, Dr. Bruce Ames was critical to the development of uh, that theory and recognition of vitamin K2. So he's still doing some good work. Now, <clears throat> Uh, so what does Dr. Uh, Ames do for supplementation? Well, that wasn't very clear, but he did mention something else. He mentioned a thing called the Cori Bar. C-H-O-R-I. And uh, the C-H-O-R-I stands for the Hospital uh, Institute, Research Institute where he works. It's the, um, let me see if I can get it right here. Uh, Children's Hospital Research Institute. So that's what Cori stands for. Now, I looked up uh, Cori Bar on Amazon, and it's not available yet. This has been going on. They've been doing research and actually clinical trials on it for over a decade now. Um, I thought that I, if I could find one, I'd get a few and start uh, eating them. Now, there was a press release about the Cori Bar. Uh, the press release was... Uh, panned by this group, the Health News Review, they basically said, look, um, this Cori Bar was, was uh, mentioned in a press release, and how good is the press release, not how good is the Cori Bar, because again, they can't access the Cori Bar either. Well, they said a lot of bad things about the press release. They said, does it adequately discuss the cost of the intervention? No. Does it release uh, the benefits, the treatment? No. Does it talk about the potential hazards? No. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There were several, there were about a dozen different things that they criticized the, uh, the press release for. Does that mean the Cori Bar is no good? No, I don't think so. I think it was an, it, it was an early release. The Cory Bar is not ready yet, and I can guarantee if it does hit the market over the next few years, I'll certainly be keeping my eyes out, and uh, I'm surely going to try it. Now, <clears throat> anything else about about this whole area? Yes, there's. Um, I think there's some really helpful under helpful things to understand about um, chronic vitamin or mineral deficiency. Here is one group's assessment of chronic vi vitamin and mineral deficiency. In other words, daily recommended um, uh, intake. Well, they're saying vitamin K way down at 10%. Uh, linoleic acid, I think that's one of the ba uh, omega-3 acids. Um, I know that a couple others are EPA and DHA, clearly... Um, uh, omega-3 uh, fatty acids, manganese. It's interesting to note on here, and this is one of the uh, groups that mentions a lot of uh, chronic deficiencies. I don't see selenium as a chronic deficiency uh, uh, micronutrient. If you look at this group, they're saying, look, alpha linoleic acid and uh, EPA. Everything else, actually, uh, EPA and DHA are pretty close. 
Now, if you read Dr. Ames's area, he would say this. 70% of the U.S. is deficient in vitamin D, 60% in vitamin E, 45% in magnesium. And I would tell you, you know, I think the, the feds, the national uh, FDA, would probably go more towards uh, agreeing with Dr. Ames, at least with magnesium. Very high rates of uh, chronic deficiencies. Calcium deficiency, 38% of us. Vitamin K deficiency, 35% of us. Uh, vitamin A, 34% of us. Vitamin C, 25% of us deficient. Uh, zinc, 8%. Vitamin B6, 8% of us deficient. Folic acid, uh, 8%. So again, I think Dr. Uh, Ames would say there's a lot more chronic vitamin and mineral deficiency than uh, a lot of other groups would. Thank you.